Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I want to show you how we can enhance the resilience and the fault tolerance of our solution by using the circuit breaker pattern. Systems fail, that is inevitable, especially in a microservices architecture the idea of being unreachable can be your worst nightmare. The beauty of solution architecture and software engineering is to find ways to tolerate the failure when it inevitably happens. This video is part of my Software Engineering Fundamental series, so if you don't want to miss any episodes, please subscribe and ring the notification bell. Almost everyone is familiar with a retry policy. It's the first fault tolerance policy that comes to mind when a service is unreachable. Simply, if an external call fails due to a transient error, then retry for n amount of times, sometimes with a back-off period, until either you get a healthy response or your retry count runs out. There is, however, another fault tolerance pattern that is equally as important, and that is the circuit breaker pattern. The circuit breaker is an electrical engineering concept, and even though this is a completely different sector, its description stands true for us as well. Circuit breaker's basic function is to interrupt current flow after a fault is detected, protecting the cascading components. This might sound a bit confusing at first. Let me explain that with a real-world example, and then I will dive into the details and the implementation of the circuit breaker pattern. Let's say that we have an application as part of our microservice infrastructure, and as part of its normal flow, it is getting the foreign exchange or FX rate between two input currencies, imagine dollar and uh, euro for example, using Visa's FX API. And that this process is crucial to the system. If this operation doesn't happen, then the customer cannot pay the merchant for the goods that they are trying to purchase. The VisaFX API, like any other API, can sometimes be inaccessible for multiple reasons, usually transient ones. A transient error covers things like network connectivity issues, API throttling, or any other unexpected exception at the API level. It could also be the case that the API is genuinely down, and it could be for a number of minutes, if that happens, then there is no way for a conversion to happen, and if no conversion happens, then a payment cannot go through. Not only is this terrible for the business that is trying to sell its goods, but they can't due to an external reason, it is also bad for our system because we might start handling requests that are doomed to fail, because at this point we know that the service is in fact down. Many requests can start piling on, and some unnecessary retries might happen, wasting resources on our system. What can we do to protect those cascading components? Well, here's where the circuit breaker comes in to save the day. The circuit breaker has three states, open, closed, and half open. Let's talk about the first two. Since the circuit breaker is used as an interceptor for the calls to go through, closed means that the calls can go through normally. Open means that they cannot, meaning no flow, no API calls go anywhere. When the calls go through the circuit breaker, when it's closed, we monitor the failure rate and the conditions of the failure. This means that we can set up a failure threshold with our own custom criteria, and if exceeded, the circuit breaker will open, which will lead to no further calls going down to that service or any other service. Since the circuit breaker status, in this case the opening of it, can be visible from the top level of our call handling, we can fail fast, preventing wasting resources and providing a better user experience since we can't actually handle those requests. If you know that you are doomed to fail, fail fast. Of course those services won't be down forever, so you're probably thinking, how can the circuit breaker close again when this external FX service inevitably comes back to a healthy state? The exact implementation depends on how you or the package you are using will implement it, but here's how the process goes. Once the circuit is open, a timer will start, and the circuit will stay open for that specific amount of time. After that break time passes, the circuit will enter a state we call half-open state. This half-open state's purpose is to allow some of the requests to be tried against that service that before was unreachable. If we still can't get a response, the circuit will open again for another break period. If the requests were successful, then the circuit will close and we will start processing requests again. All that covers the main flow of how the circuit breaker works. We can, however, take it a step further to provide an even better user experience and eliminate any downtime. We can do that by adding into the mix the fallback policy. Let me explain that by extending the previous example. 
Opening the circuit during the VisaFX API being unreachable means that we cannot handle any requests against that API. However, we can use two different approaches to eliminate any downtime. Whichever one you choose to use depends on your business case and how feasible it is, so I will leave that to you, but I'm just going to give you the two that I can think of for this specific example. First, instead of opening the circuit and failing fast, we will open the circuit and we can either fall back to a second FX service, such as an open exchange rate API, which will likely have very similar FX rate with the Visa one anyway, or alternatively, you can actually always cache the last FX value for each pair served, and if the currency has been previously requested, you can just serve it from the cache. Of course, if you don't have it in the cache, you would have to fall back to another API, so at this point it's up to you to see how you will handle that flow. But adding the fallback into the mix ensures that at least one service or one approach is backing up something that might fail. The process of closing the circuit at this point is exactly the same. After the breaking period passes, the circuit breaker will enter half open state and will try the main effects API again for a few requests. If it's healthy, then the circuit breaker will fully close and start handling requests as normal. This is all you need to know regarding the topic. It's a very straightforward but very helpful pattern and very powerful indeed that can really enhance the resilience of your application. I won't be showing the exact implementation in code here since pretty much every single language has a package that offers a circuit breaker policy to use. In the next video, I will show you how you can implement this pattern using policy implementation in .NET Core. If I already have created that video, you will be able to click on the top right corner of your screen right now to watch it. That's all I had for you for today, thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my GitHub sponsors for making these videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.